in the real world, very few items have a super sharp edge, like what we're seeing on this box, and what we see a lot of times on 3D models. What we want to do is we want to mimic reality and kind of round off the edge, but a lot of times you don't need to go as far as using tools like rounder and router and, and have multiple faces. Sometimes you just need one little face, enough to catch light. And that's where the bevel tool comes into play. It's the most commonly used modeling function, and all it does is it extrudes away from the original face, but it doesn't leave any extra geometry uh, like, like the original face. It doesn't leave that behind like the extrude tool. And it also allows us to um, do a little more tweaking to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this surface. I'm going to go into texture mode um, just so that we can see the light hitting it when I apply a small little bevel. Okay. So as I rot rotate this around, I now have a new face for light to catch makes it a lot more interesting than these other edges. Okay, so what I thought we could do is take a look at the bevel tool and see what's going on uh, with the tool and uh, some uses for it and uh, some ways to avoid some gotchas on it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to undo that. And I did it, I used the bevel tool interactively in the viewport, but what I'm going to do now is open up the, I'm going to come over to multiply bevel. I hit B on the keyboard in order to use it. That's the shortcut key. And remember to find the shortcut keys in the buttons, just look right on the button and you can see what the shortcut key is. I'm going to hit N for numeric, or I could come down here to the bottom menu where it says numeric. And I'm going to reset the tool. So we're back to uh, default. Okay, so by default, nothing's happened yet. We're in the bevel tool. It just looks like our polygon selected. And uh, I'm going to go to texture wire just so that we can see the, the wireframe on this. Okay, so the first option that we have is to shift. And what shift does, I'm going to use the mini slider. It shifts the selected polygon away from its original location. And it's building these extra faces along the side. Okay, but there's not a polygon underneath here as if we were to use extrude, the extrude tool. So this is shift. So you get to determine how far away do you want that face to be. In a micro bevel, in a tiny little bevel, you, well, you barely push it away. But depending on what you're building will depend on how far away you uh, want to shift it. Okay, we're going to skip this little plus and minus here for right now. And we're going to skip to the, the, the next most important uh, function of, of the bevel tool, which is the inset. An inset determines how much do you want to shrink or scale the original polygon in, which of course looks like it's tapering here. Okay, So we can inset and shift with the bevel tool. It's all one function of the bevel tool. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put this to use here in a second, but let's just take a, another look. You can create a new surface. So if I come over to new surface and let's just say we'll call it um, uh, we'll call it logo. Okay, see I'm giving the new faces a new surface. That's if you want to. So if you don't want to go back and and later select that geometry to give it a new surface, you can do it as you're building it. And that's the new surface function. So we can see this also helps us see what is being created. This isn't being recreated. It was already there. It's just these four new polygons right here that are being created. Okay. And we'll get to the inner and outer uh, edges. We'll get to that um, in just here in a second. So. Now that we know that bevel is for shifting and insetting uh, of faces and know that each face will be treated separately, uh, it's not going to do it as one big group. We have other tools like multi-shift and smooth shift and extender plus that, that do that. But for bevel, each face will be um, independent and we'll be seeing that as well. So now that we have a, a basic understanding of the bevel tool, I'm going to come over to this little Lightwave logo that isn't very impressive. It's got these hard edges, not really, uh, not really all that exciting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the front faces and only the front faces. And I'm just going to kind of position this so we can see it. I'm going to hit B for bevel, N for numeric. Now it remembers the last settings we were using, and uh, these settings are not really working for this. So I'm going to reset. And I'm going to shift away 
from the geometry a little bit and I'm going to inset a little bit and maybe not shift away so much. I'm going to do one of those little tiny little bevels on this. Okay, And so now you can see the light catching that edge and it looks much nicer. It's, it's much, uh, much more impressive in, in my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to undo because I'm going to show you a gotcha that you might run into. I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to grab this G, copy, paste it to a new layer. Okay, let's go to texture wire. I'm going to grab this face, B for bevel, N for numeric, and I'm going to inset it more. I want a, a nice big bevel here, and I'm going to shift it some more. Okay, I'm running into a problem with my geometry. It's, I'm insetting so much, let's, let's do it interactively, okay? That looks fine, but then I'm insetting so much, it starts to, to overlap the points, okay? Now, what a lot of people do is they just go, oh, well, I'll back it up, and I won't, I won't inset it so much, but what if the look you're going for requires the inset? So we need to learn how to, to clean this up. So I'm going to go ahead and commit. And then I'm going to use all four of my windows because what I really want is to get over here to the front view in wireframe and see that this point is overlapping. So with control T, the drag tool, I'm just going to stop that from overlapping. Okay. Over here. Now these, um, I got a lot of points that surpass this now. So what I can do, just another option, instead of moving these points, I'm just going to weld them to that point okay and we'll see how that holds up but let's take a look that looks fine that looks fine so our only real problem area was right there so let's see what this looks like there we go problem fixed so this one we just moved the point so that it wasn't overlapping and the other one we welded points so when you have points converging on themselves so you have them you know shrinking in because of the inset sometimes it requires you to weld or move points so that they're not overlapping now there's another way to go about it um, let's take a let's take another letter let's say um, well let's say the W because the W is another face Let's just copy and paste. This time I just grabbed the front face. Okay, I'm going to bevel this. Okay, see how it starts to overlap here? Well, we do have an option. Let's go to in for numeric. Instead of beveling inner, we can do outer, and it bevels away from the from the the polygon so instead of beveling in it's beveling out and so sometimes we work backwards to get um, to get the bevel that we want so if we if we wanted to bevel this and not have any cleanup use outer and then build and then do your extrude um, from from here back okay and so this is what the inner and outer allows us to do the inner bevels in and we've got all this now we could clean that up just drag those points and we're set but if we if we want to we can just work the other way have the smaller face uh, already built build the bevel out and then uh, build from there and that'll that'll work as well so now we know what the uh, inner and outer is all about we know what the shift and inset is all about and the new surface we need to figure out what this plus and minus is we also learned a couple ways of, of cleaning up that that geometry but what I'm gonna do is just grab a flat plane with the arrow keys I'm gonna give it some segments okay let's turn texture wire on I'm gonna move it up just a little bit so we can get a good look okay so with the bevel tool B for bevel I'm gonna bevel oops I still got out selected so let me do inner okay see how each face is being beveled independent of of the other so that's that's what the bevel tool is always going to do. There's no group function on this bevel tool. There's other tools that allow you to um, to do that, like multi shift and extender plus and smooth shift. So, what the plus and minus allow me to do is let me go with um, 400 millimeters for the shift, and let me do t um, let me do 100 for the inset. Now, what the plus and minus will do is if I say let's do um, 10, uh, actually I'm going to say 50, let's go higher with this one, I'm going to do 200, 
Okay. So what's happening is it's saying use the shift of 400 millimeters, but randomly add or subtract 200 millimeters. So we get these we get these random shifts. And you can do the same thing with inset. Be careful with inset because remember you don't want to um, overlap the the poly. So I'm just going to say 10. Okay, so not only do we have random, and I can increase that a little bit. See how it's randomly, <laughs> in real time we're getting to kind of see it randomly go. Okay, so I've randomly inset and shifted. So it's saying inset 100 millimeters plus or minus 77 millimeters. Okay, so now we have a, a pretty good idea of what the tools do. Let's take a look at how they work interactively. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to that. We've got a neat little cityscape of sorts. Or just some nernies and greebles to throw onto uh, some kind of ship. I'm going to go and draw a box out. Get rid of all these segments. Okay, Just draw something like this. Center it. Okay, And I'm going to add some segments. So I'm going to use the knife tool, add a couple segments. And if you don't want to use the knife tool and you want to add segments while you build, well, we already know we can create that box. It remembers my last settings. And before I've created it, I can go up with the arrow key, right with the arrow key, I've, I've added segments. Okay, I'm going to shrink that in a little bit. F2 to center. And now what I'm going to do is turn symmetry on so that I can bevel on one side and it will bevel the other side. So let's just build just a real uh, rough shape of a character and we'll use the bevel tool to do it. So I'm going to kind of zoom out. I'm going to select these faces and without using the numeric window, I'm just going to hit B for bevel and I'm going to drag for oh I got that random going <laughs> we've got to go back to the numeric so I lied we are going to use the we're going to reset the 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 plus and minus was kind of randomizing the um, the bevel so if I move my cursor from left to right I'm insetting and up and down is shifting okay so I can quickly do multiple bevels or one bevel just by left clicking and dragging to set my shape and if I right click I commit so here's what here's what we're gonna do let's go to um, full screen and I'm going to make the upper thigh the lower thigh the upper knee the lower knee the upper calf the lower calf the upper foot and the lower foot okay so I got little legs I'm going to expand my selection and stretch out the feet a little bit. Okay, And that's not looking uh, too much like a character. It's kind of blocky, but if I hit the tab key, I can turn on sub patches and I can tuck in some of these points and pull out the belly a little bit, stick in the back some, pull out the, the butt some. Okay, And I can start working with these points. Okay, but let's focus a little more on the bevel tool. So I'm going to grab the polygon right here, B for bevel. I'm going to make the neck, then I'm going to bevel the head, rotate that head up, come over to the arms. Remember, I'm in symmetry mode, so I only have to work on one side. And I can bevel, 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 bevel bevel and then of course I could eventually build hands and things like that I can adjust all this but the idea is with the box tool and the bevel tool I've already got the start of a character now it's actually this but with sub patches we can we can be here but it but we can see that quickly we can add geometry to um, to our our object just with the quick bevel so remember I'm gonna just create a box real fast get rid of those segments turn symmetry off, center it. If I select one polygon and use B for bevel, I can, left and right is going to inset, up and down is going to shift. Okay. If I right click, I've just committed and I can start a new bevel. Right click, right click, 
Okay. So I can do multiple bevels without having to keep dropping the tool and using it again. Hit N for numeric. I can always shift, which is shifting, which is moving the polygon away from its original location. I can inset, which scales it in. Okay. I can randomize on mul when I have multiple bevels selected, or sorry, multiple polygons selected. I can randomize the plus and the minus uh, with the plus and the minus for randomizing the shift and the inset. I can create a new surface on the beveled polygons while I work and I can uh, work with the edges beveling in or out depending on what I'm working with and I found that I rarely use the out uh, unless I'm working on logos. If I'm working on 3D logos it comes in handy all the time for certain letters that uh, just don't uh, play nice with bevel because they've got so many points in a really tight corner. Okay, so that's a quick look at the bevel tool. Uh, I'm sure that you'll end up using it. It's the, the most commonly used modeling function and uh, it can really uh, help improve the quality of your model by adding those little micro bevels and adding those faces that are going to catch light.